Hello, good to see you. I'm really glad to be here. I come from far away from Mexico City. So I'm really glad to be here. I would like to thank Documenta, INSAR, and the Shufflin Stiftung for making possible that I am here today to share with you a project that's called Casa Gallina. Uh, Casa Gallina is a transdisciplinary cultural project. It's based in Mexico City in a neighborhood called Santa Maria La Rivera, and we are focused on programming around learnings, actions, relating culture, community, and environment. For us, it's very important the territory, and uh, we build all kinds of situations in which different inhabitants of the neighborhood in which we are located can exchange around these topics. Uh, the project has existed since 2013, and from 2013 and 2018, it was the physical space for Insight. And in 2019, we start a new stage in which we began like making a network with agents uh, that are concerned about topics that are the same as us, as community, resilience, environment um, for building projects in common. Um, this is the house. As you can see, this is a drawing made by a neighbor and is where most of the situations happen. Uh, it's, a, it's a place in which you have no exhibitions. It's much more a place of encounter, of meetings, of making dialogues, of making different kind of communities that inhabit the neighborhood to, have, to live situations in which they can exchange. Uh, for us, it's very important building also different kind of alliances in uh, institutions or agents that are located in the neighborhood. Since we have been there for eight years, we have been able to build a very strong uh, network of alliances that has bring us to develop different kinds of projects that involve different kinds of professionals, not just artists, but scientists, horticulturists, chefs, cookers. And we recognize all these kind of knowledges that have the same uh, importance and relevance that in between them. We are not just concerned on working with professionals, but also with traditional knowledges uh, the neighborhood is inhabited by uh, very heterogeneous people. Uh, some of them come from different parts of the country and they have brought a lot of knowledge from their areas. Uh, and through different kind of projects, we have come to do that. Uh, can we put the next one, please? Well, I was defining you Casa Gallina and as you saw in the, in the drawing, we have a space for Orchard. 
It's a, an educative orchard that has been a very important and core space for the house. We have built a network with around 38 urban farming that are uh, leaders that are deal by neighbors. And it has become a space of exchange. It's not a productive orchard, but it's much more like a, a space in which dialogues, in which encountering with other species such, such as plants. And for us, it's also very important, the link with nutrition. So all the program that we have with cooking is related with what is produced in the neighborhood. The, in the in the urban farm. Can we put the next one, please? Uh, w the, sp the house is also like a space for encounter. For us, it's very important for building situations in which there is no propaganda, but it's more building spaces in which neighbors feel safe, in which they can exchange. And for us, it's very important the cross of generation, the cross of different people that doesn't come from the same interest or the same origin. And that's the way we have built a lot of situations crossing older uh, neighbors and younger ones. Can we put the next one, please? Um, in 2019, that we started a new stage of the of the project, we started to build the program around two main axes. One of them is the local community neighborhood program, which feeds and which is located in the house. In fact, the house is just for neighbors, just people that inhabit Santa Maria La Rivera are the ones that can. Uh, use and can be in the house. For us that is very important because some of the artistic projects we know may be like the first step for gentrification. And for us it was very important since the very beginning that the interlocutors of our programs are the inhabitants of a territory. As they share territory is the way that they can go deep on the situations that we build and that we and company in, in Casa Gallina. And the second axis of the program has to do with building network of alliances in other territories. That has just started in 2019, and we have started, well, we have been building a very deep network with agents from different perspectives that are concerned about environment, community, cultural production, but always thinking about building projects under the perspective of, of building common good and not building a career, not, it, this is not constructed under authorship. And that may be saying easily, but it has to do on uh, the perspective of generosity uh, and on bringing the skills that our, of our collaborators have under this umbrella of a collective project. And that has to do with having dialogue, with, with sharing an ethic, with building the processes with time and open that this can be built and that this can be done in um, the umbrella of, of the project we have. Can we put the next one, please? This is the neighborhood in which we are located. Even though Mexico City is a very big uh, city that has a lot of situations going on there that brings people under anonymate and that always all the time is forcing but not for not having these kind of interactions the neighborhood is very particular it is in between four four big avenues which brings that inside the neighborhood you have a lot of uh, dynamics of little cities in which people go to the market they know each other they consume from local businesses and for us it has been very important to build and to be able to uh, construct in dialogue with the neighbors and with people that in having that space uh, experiences that are meaningful to them and that are focused on uh, everyday life for us is very important that the situations that we are building and that we are sharing and that we are constructing are always anchored into uh, daily life. Because we are not a theoretical platform, we are much more concerned on building situations that people can live and that can uh, ins be meaningful for the everyday life. Uh, can we put the next one? 
These are some photos of the situations that are occurring in the house. As you can see, we have a very strong concern about building educational processes. Uh, we have a very deep a linkage with schools, with local public schools in the neighborhood. And we are also concerned about bringing tools for building knowledge in not in a traditional or vertical way. Um, we are also trying, and it's something that we have achieved this last year, that 50%, and we would like to go up, of our uh, allies that are the ones that implement the, the programs in the house are neighbors. Uh, we have found very interested, interesting agents that inhabit the neighborhood, and that just has been possible because we have been landed and anchored there for eight years. And we, think that, we think that these uh, long-term processes are just possible when you have like this anchored space in which you can build community, not in a very short time, but instead in long time, in which you can have this interaction. Uh, for the team, our methodology has to do a lot with the philosophy of care. Uh, all the situations are built under the premise of building a space in which all of the participants feel comfortable. Care for us is very, very important. And we, we think of ourselves much more as facilitators than, uh, than as authors. For us, it's uh, important facilitating a situation in which uh, the participants can have all this social energy build in which they feel they feel safe. The specific photos you're seeing is a place that is called the Earth Nook, and that is it has built. It has it it gathers a lot of materials around the environment for young kids. Uh, the way that it is operated is that we have a neighbor that is there in specific times of the day. Neighbors can make a date and they can come and little children can explore the way they want all these materials. So it's the voice of the children, the ones that leads and that decides what are the activities they're going to make. For us, it's very important that recognizing that also young kids are agents of deciding and of building another kind of relations all around the world. Can we bring, can we put the other one, please? Uh, for us, it's also very important the spaces of sharing, uh, building. Uh, Meetings all around food is, is important, in which neighbors learn on how to prepare food, but also nutrition values. In Mexico, we have a very deep problem with health and with all industrialized food. So for us, instead of having a discourse or building propaganda, for us it's important to build an experience in which people can be, feel alive all these things. Uh, so, as you can see, we have a lot of experiences in which different kind of and very heterogeneous group can be together building something, in this case, cooking. Um, and we have been going through these kind of encounters and meetings, recognizing the richness of the, of the neighborhood. Most of people that, most of neighbors have come their families through other parts of, of Mexico, and they have bring with them all these knowledges from different areas from, from, the, from Mexico, and sometimes bringing also the relationship in between where they live and the ingredients they use uh, from local spaces where they come from. In Mexico, we have a very deep and not, not so conscious process of races in which sometimes if you belong or if you come from indigenous uh, origins, it's not so common that you recognize it because the state has built like this kind of very structural uh, way on denying all these differences that inhabit Mexico. For example, languages. In Mexico, there are 68 languages that are spoken and well, the Spanish has become like the official one, but we, could, we are building these situations in which people recognize their own origins not in a propaganda way, but recognizing all these 
and richness that has this, uh, this tradition, let's say. So we build some kind of situations for sharing that. And also we are concerned about producing different kind of materials that goes from books, from games or different recipes, whatever is needed to, that can, can bring a different kind of exchanges. The photo you're seeing there is a game that's called I Recreate the City. And it was uh, built from scratch, from zero. We decided to invite a collaborator that is an artist and that has been a long time uh, experimenting with didactic materials. And this is like a kind of, let's say, monopoly, but it's a version that is a collaborative one in which uh, kids have to deal with different kind of billions that goes from garbage to uh, deforestation, industrialization, consumption, and they have to build alliances in between them. They are characters that are half person and half animal or, or some endemic species from the area. And for us, it's also very important that through game, kids can build other kind of relationships. Uh, none of the exper experiences and situations in Casa Gallina has any monetary cost, but we are always uh, very uh, focused on building other kind of trades or other kind of uh, economics. So all, pe all the people that participate in one of these situations has to build some kind of, of retribution situation. And that is build and decide among the group that is participating on, on experiences. Can we put next one, please? The orchard, as I was saying, is like a very important and one of the cores of the house, but it's related always with nutrition. And it has become a space. In Mexico City, you don't have a lot of green areas. In fact, in the neighborhood, you just have one little park. It's very different from here. It's very gray, all the spaces. So people and neighbors have found this like a space in which they can get related to plants, but not just in an ornamental or way, but, just, but also bringing all this knowledge that has come on how you deal and how you interact in an ethical perspective on the food, for example. Uh, on this line, we have also like grown our network and, be, and have these dialogues and exchanges with local producers that come from rural areas nearby Mexico City. In a way that neighbors that live in this very specific urban area in Santa Maria La Rivera where Casa Gallina is located, but also can get like the uh, accessibility of products that are produced under ethical processes not necessarily uh, regarding market or publicity, but real way of producing attached and related to uh, origin knowledge that has a very long tradition. Can we put next one, please? We have also been focused on building another kind of relations with neighbors in which they are not just users or consumers of the programs we build, but for us has been very important to involve them in the programming, but also in generating uh, laboratories in which we produce prototypes in a relationship with them and not just thinking of them as users, but again, as producers and as of thinkers of what they want to, to deal with. Uh, these photos that you're seeing are some of our allies that live in other parts of Mexico, but that have come to Casa Gallina after doing a very long time, term process of mapping their own, communi their own communities and then coming to Casa Gallina for being, building a prototype in how they would like to build a narrative of their own mappings. So this format of, of social prototypes has become one of the methodologies we have uh, 
integrate in our way of, pro of producing situations in which uh, an horizontal way of thinking is very important. You, you don't have like the specialists and the neighbors and participants, but you have like this kind of horizontal exchange and dialogue in which all of the knowledges are recognized at the same level and that ca can come with the skills of professionals bring with this common good project to build a kind of narrative that is built on these ideas of horizontally exchange of knowledge. Can we put next one, please? As I told you, Casa Gallina has, for example, no exhibition space. And for us, it's also important not to be the only place in which situations happen. So we have built a very deep, engaged uh, kind of network of alliances in a specific net neighborhood. These photos you're seeing is one exhibition that is now open in the Geology Museum, which is one of the main cultural institutions that is around. It's like two blocks from Casa Gallina. And for us, it's important to bring together science and art. So in this exhibition, for example, we have an exhibition around glaciers, which, as you know, is one of the victims of climate change uh, regarding having a, a, an artwork we produced with an artist and a research that was shared with us by a scientific. But also we have built uh, links and a network with other kind of institutions, such as a community library that is nearby Casa Gallina in which uh, some neighbors, the neighbors that are more attached to the urban farming, they made a book that we accompanied, that we edited. And it, this is a presentation of the book in which the team of Casa Gallina is not the one that is sharing or is presenting, but the authors that are neighbors themselves are the ones that are sharing with other community members the work they have done. And for us, uh, it has been very important. These linkages we have made, built, for example, with this library, with this museum. Can we put next one, please? And as I was telling you, schools for us are very important because in Mexico, public education is in a very lack, uh, is in a very hard condition in which you have many problems and many uh, things that are needed. So we have built alliances, not just bringing workshops for kids, but also working alongside with the teachers. Teachers that are the ones that are in front of groups and that can bring all the materials and all the knowledge that we can build together for the groups they work with. It has been like a methodology we have also worked on, having interaction with promoters, with teachers, with educators. Maybe they are not formal, but they have spaces in which they can, they can build on community with different kids. Uh, to bring them and to bring on producing contents all around the environment. Um, for example, we have built this, we are now building these uh, contents for first childhood because it has come that there are not so many materials around the environment for that ages. And in this case, we, this mediator is sharing a methodology for teachers for a specific school for first childhood. Um, this kind of alliances has just been possible again because we have been anchored to this territory for eight years. It's not so easy to get like in touch and open for the network of, of institutions we have been working with. So I think that one of the important and core things of Casa Gallina is that it has been committed to a territory for long term processes and for a long time. As we recognize that, once we started in 2019 building a network of collaborations with other agents, we decided that we wanted to do it in the same way recognizing that uh, these agents that we would like to work with 
have this anchor to different territories. So this is not, we are not the ones that come to new territories and say, hey, we are now coming. It's much more important for us building alliances and networks with agents that have an anchor to territories. Can we put the next one, please? So there's technical issues going on. So uh, regarding this network that we have built, we have been focused on working inside Mexico, like uh, thinking that the first step should be something on building network with a uh, communities that are around and that we can like somehow share the narratives and the processes we have been working on. Um, so we have started like building a kind of, ah, there we are. Can we put the next one? Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, in schools, we have been working with these programs of activations and workshops, but also involving artists on producing artworks that can stay in the school facilities. So it's, this is a permanent intervention made not just by the artists, but in a process of collaboration with the communities that are inhabiting the, the space of local schools. We have built a very deep alliances with schools that not just consider of producing the, a piece, an art piece, but also thinking on how this can be meaningful for the communities that go around the school. So we have made some programs activating these spaces. For example, this is a garden in which an art piece was made by an artist in dialogue with uh, some students of a high school. And it regards all the fauna that inhabits the space. But it has been activated in alliance with another organization that is focused on promoting reading. And they have done a very long uh, workshop on around mixing nature reading with the kids of the school. So somehow we think as we are located and anchored to this territory that has these permanent institutions such as the schools, we can be able to build these alliances that goes further than just bringing an artist, making all this process that is dense, imagining all these kind of exchanges in between the community and the artist, installing the piece in the facilities of the space, but also making a program of activations that can go long, I think maybe a year or more, that can make meaningful this intervention of art for the communities that goes through the school. Uh, can we put next one? This 2022 program 
as I told you, has these two axes, the one of local that we have been talking about, but also building this network with other agents and organizations in other parts of Mexico. On this 2022, we have built net, uh, this uh, network in these spaces of, of Mexico that you can see. For us, it's, much, it's very important to start building these collaborations, not just sharing what we do, but also building co pro projects in conversations uh, in the same way that we do with neighbors, not being an imposition for what we bring, but much more an opener of conversation. And a way of doing this a way that we have found is with the materials we produce. Uh, I brought some of the materials that are here that you can see afterwards. Most of them are about, well, all of them are about the environment, but most of them are thinking about how these objects, products can be the starting of a conversation point. We don't think of our products as or products that are already done. We always think of them as a stage of a process that can be then articulated, activated, implemented with uh, the collaboration with other agents in other territories. One of the books that we have done recently, can we put the next one, please? Is this box which is a publication that contains different materials. You can see them there. There are uh, different elements, thought of them in a specific formats. It's a book that is about a river in Mexico called Papaloapan. That is a name that comes from a Nahuatl word that uh, is, the meaning of it is butterfly. And uh, we decided to do work on this area because it's a very important river that feeds much of the cities, towns, and communities all around Veracruz. And it comes to the end in the Mexican Gulf in which it, it, it ends the, the river. And we decided to make this project on a territory that can be meaningful for the inhabitants of that territory. So the process we did for making this book was not imagining the territory from a desk, but much more making some kind of journeys, different journeys and different visits to this space. The editor is from one of the towns that is uh, in the riverside of Papaloapan River. And it's a river thought for kids because most of people of little kids that inhabit those, those spaces because of economic conditions are not always very, uh, it's not possible for them to have books on their own. Uh, culture processes are very elitist somehow in Mexico. So this book has been done for them and in dialogue with them. Uh, the book, can we put next one? Is, well, it's, it's not in fact a book, it's a publication, it's a box that contains a map that it has been built with all the local knowledge of, of the river. And we have invited an illustrator that comes from the mountain in which the river begins, Cuauhtémoc Huetzca. And he decided to do this map in which elements that are really important of the context are there, such as original languages, uh, what is in the context, what fabrics are there that has been polluting the river, which are the cultural practices that are around and that are illustrated in, in this map. The map also contains some activations made by an educator that kids can open the box, can display the map, and can use it as a guide of making activations that involve them with the other parts of the book. Uh, the book contains also photographs from two young photographers that are called Enero and April. January and April is, his, is her 
artistic name and another photographer called Dolores Medel. They are both from nearby the area. They are both from Veracruz. And they made these amazing photographs regarding the river, regarding the biodiversity there, regarding the context. And these uh, images are in dialogue with some text from a very well-known children writer called Adolfo Cordova that is also from that area. And it, it has been a, a collective process in which nothing is underneath the other. Images are speaking with text in a very horizontal way in which it's not the author is the writer or the authors are the photographers. It's much more having this dialogue in the edition of the book in which you have interacting all these kind of, of contents. And the contents for us was important that they could be meaningful for kids. So we developed this kind of formats that are not so formal and the box is, is meant like a treasure box that comes for the kids. They open it and they can find different kind of, of materials in there. Can we put next one, please? Once we had the book, even though it has been fitted with all the interaction with communities from different parts of Veracruz, this is the state, this is an state of Mexico called Veracruz in the coast. Even though we, we made all this publication feeding by the interaction of these writer, photographers, editor, educator, and illustrator with them. Uh, once we have the book that has been like a year after this first trips that was made, we decided to come back to all these communities and make a process in which we can deliver back all these projects that has been fitted with them. For us, it's very important because as you know, some practices that goes with communities don't come back with the result or with the somehow giving back what has been fitted by, the, by their own. And it has been a very interesting experience in which kids can find themselves in the book, not just in the photos, but in the drawings, but in the poems that gather all the experiences that were uh, regarded on this trip. So we visited these communities that are all around the river, and we could establish linkage with local spaces, local cultural community spaces, such as libraries, schools, local museums, and uh, we could be enabled to make this network of, of spaces in which we made workshop and present the book. Uh, local kids were convocated to, to go to those workshops and is again not the end of the stage because now that we have been in contact with them, we are building now new kind of alliances with them, building new processes that have started with this conversation. We have also made a process uh, made being possible by technology, by Zoom, in which may, we made an, an activation workshop in which we sent to the educators of these educational community centers of these other parts of the area. We sent them the book and we made sessions with them thinking on how this book can be activated with the communities they work with. Each of these spaces have an specific uh, facilities in which these educators work with different uh, kids. So again, as in the neighborhood, we work directly with communities of kids, but also with promoters that can be embroiled, that can make themselves the, a program to activate this kind of contents. Can we put next one, please? These are the kind of activations we did. Uh, the first photo is in a local museum, and we decided that in the process of uh, giving the books to kids instead of being like this kind of philanthropy in which we give just give the book they participated in a process in the workshop and they made their own rivers the name of the book is we make our river so we invited them to make their own rivers imagining what would they like to have in their own river 
what form it may have. As I was telling you, papaloapan is kite in, is, is butterfly, but it's also kite in Nahuatl. So the, the name of the river has to do with its form. So kids were uh, invited to imagine their own rivers. And at the end, we made this exhibition in which the core was the map that we have already done, but their own maps were building on the exhibition. And when they gave us like this drawing, it was like much more an exchange in which their own work has value, but has value and then we give them the book. They have been started doing activities of the book and sharing that with us. Um, we have worked also in public libraries, such as the other photo. And can we put the next one, please? It has been very moving how kids have started using the materials of, of the book. That one that you're seeing is an exercise that is called the divers in which um, the writer and the photographer, when they made their first journey, they invited different kids to imagine how they can go in a dive to the river. So we decided to make this flip book. This is a, a material that is like an animation in the book. And kids have started making their own animations in the part of the back of the book. So the, draw, the book has been appropriated by them. Uh, can we put next one, please? And it has been also very moving. For example, this kid was in the, in the first travel, so he was very proud that one of the drawings is in the, is in the book. And he, even though he's very young, it was very nice how he shared that he feel nostalgia. Nostalgia for the moment that he did the drawing and that now is part of another book. He felt very proud and for us was also very important, as I was telling you, to come back to the community and to deliver the, pro the project when once it, it has become a product to them. These are the kind of exhibitions that we did with them. And uh, well, these are different kind of rivers that they, that they imagine. Can we put next one, please? Some of the kids is like the book, the only book they would have at home. So for us, it was also important that they can have a copy of the book. This is another kid that she decided to make a flower river. So the shape of the river is the flower and it is called the, the river flower. But also in this, in this uh, trip and in this tour that we made in different communities, we reached some professors and promoters that can also activate the book with another, another kids, another communities. And uh, we printed a thousand copies of the book and half of them has already been delivered in these communities. Why half of them? Because we think that uh, it's important that even though this uh, product, it's about a specific territory, the Papaloapan River, it can also speak to other kids that live nearby rivers or other uh, bodies of water. So we are now developing a version of these contents that can become an exhibition, an exhibition, community exhibition that can bring along science, the drawings of the kids, the photographs, the poems that are content in the book, so this is like this long-term processes that we work with in which we are much more focused on processes than on results and products. And that can be like in different steps, in different phases that can be growing in an organic perspective of the contents that we have already have. So that's why we are keeping a, a part of the publications to be activated in these other stages that the process is going to have. Can we have bring, can we put the next one, please? And these are some photos of the activations, again in Veracruz. As you see, as I was telling you, for us it's important that the kids have their own book. They in fact made some drawings on them and make them uh, like they appropriate this book. Can we put the next one? And I wanted to share with you this specific project. 
But uh, as I was telling at the beginning, there are many projects that we are working on. It's just like a way on sharing with you the methodology we, we, we work on. And this is our uh, spaces in which you can like see what we are working on. And I also brought other of the publications. So if you want, you can see them physically. I don't know if you have any questions or any comments that you would like to that we can start a conversation. In. But maybe it would be interesting to talk about what you were mentioning about the, uh, the mapping, the collective mapping uh, process, how that network was built uh, in other territories with people who really live and work and deal with the issues of environmental uh, stress, let's say, in different territory, what kind of collective mapping methodology has been uh, develop, let's say, in between those communities with Casa Gallina or leaded by Casa Gallina? Yes. At the beginning, when we landed or we started the project, we started making different kinds of relating to the territory. And one of them was working with the iconoclasistas, which are this uh, collective of Argentinians that have developed and that have gone deep on the collective mapping. Collective mapping is a strategy in which rec that recognizes that the inhabitants of a territory are the ones that are much, that are the ones that really know the territory. So it's a process. It's a social process in which a map is fitted with uh, the information that the inhabitants have of them. So we did that in 2015 when we arrived to the neighborhood. And once we decided to start this new axis of linking the project to other territories, we think that this strategy is a very ethical and a very good perspective on bringing people a linkage, an anchor to their own territory, sharing with the other inhabitants of the space. So under this methodology, as a team, we decided to prepare an edition of a book that can contain different kind of uh, questions around a specific axis of territory that can be anchored to different territories, such as water, land, uh, seeds, how the community and the families is imagined in each territory. So we made a book that is this one. That I'm going just to show you. We decided to invite a local illustrator from the neighborhood that developed of the, all these icons that are icons that can be used in different uh, methodologies, perspective maps. And we collaborated with him and with a writer and developed this, this book that is a manual of a methodology of collective mapping. Once we had the book, we started to distribute it with different organizations all around Mexico. We received this book in the uh, worst confinement moment of the pandemic. So what we decided to do is to send this by mail, physical, physical mail, to all these organizations that we thought could be useful for them, this methodology. I should say that this book is printed in five languages. One of them is Spanish, but the others are original languages that are spoken in different regions of Mexico. Purepecha, Sotzil, Wixarica, Huichol, Ombeyauts, and Spanish. Um, 
we decided to work on that languages because tradition in those areas is very related to the defense of the territory. So we thought that making this manual in those languages can be meaningful for them. The way we work with uh, linkages with these communities is that we start a conversation with a, tr a translator. But in most of these communities, it's not that this is a professional translator. It's much more that are agents that are really committed to their identity and that defend their own culture, their own cosmovision. And that's why they are translators. So it's much more like sharing with them the narratives and then they make their own version of the book. I would say that it's not a literal translation, but it's more an appropriation of the contents so they can be meaningful for the community that spoke that language. So in the pandemic, we received the book and we decided to deliver it to different agents, making a, a linkage and a network of different uh, possible organizations that can activate this. Once it was delivered, we uh, convocate them some of them to build a group, a community of learn, we called it, in which we gather twice a week at the beginning and afterward once a week and then once every two weeks, in which we shared with them and we imagined together how these contents can be activated in their own territories. We work with 13 organizations all around Mexico, uh, most of them linked, well, all of them anchored to a territory and uh, all of them concerned about environmental issues on their own territories. Uh, regarding this, this situation in different perspectives, such as educational, such as a much more active way on linking people to their own uh, territories. So we started that process in which uh, we worked for eight months together uh, all of our processes are long-term thought, and they activate these contents in their own communities. For making that, in the process, we made with them a specific maps of their territories, in which they decided how they wanted to call the territory, a description of it, and iconoclasistas, because this, this is a project we made with them, share with them a methodology in which you get to know and to get to know your own territory, thinking of it on what are the things that are important of the territory that make you proud of it. Then what are the things that uh, threaten the territory? And what are the resistance that community do, actions that community do for resisting that uh, threatens. So it's like an end in which you go first talking about what makes you proud, what makes interesting the territory, then you talk about the threatens, but then you end thinking on what are the actions and the things that you, the community does for resisting of those kind of things. With this methodology, each of the, co of the organizations and agents made their own map of their own territory. They made a description of it with these kind of things, that the things that are good, the threatens, and the resisting processes. And they choose some of these icons on the problems and on the things they wanted to point out of their own territories. We said... Kann ich das mal auf Deutsch so zusammenfassen oder was ich verstanden habe? Also so, Sie versuchen mit den Leuten in den verschiedenen äh, Regionen, die, äh, die äh, das, was das ähm, Land äh, so wertvoll macht oder das, was im Land, äh, in der Region so wertvoll ist, rauszukriegen, worauf sie stolz sind, um dann... Äh, das, was das Land so wertvoll macht, zu kultivieren und also da Widerstandskräfte zu mobilisieren, um das Land zu erhalten für die Menschen, die dort leben. Ja, genau. Stimmt das? No. Ja, 
what this lady said is that um, you identify basically the strengths of the indigenous people of the communities and bring that to life and uh, uh, make them being respected and um, so that they can really develop where they are and that it doesn't get lost. So, I mean, I think it's uh, a correct, yeah. sehr, sehr, sehr correct visit this formuliert haben. Yeah. 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 Also, 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 Uh, dem, was, uh, was Josefa hier formuliert hat. Ja, ah, ja. ja. Okay. Nee, sehr gut. Okay. Sie, sie, ich denke, es nicht so ganz nee, sie, sie, sie haben das sehr gut formuliert. Vielen Dank für den Beitrag. Ja. Ja. Ich habe dann noch eine Frage. Was zum Beispiel, äh, welche Ressource äh, äh, entdecken Sie mit den äh, Menschen in den Regionen, auf die die Menschen stolz sein können und stolz sind und aus denen sie dann was für sich machen. The question is, what kind of resources or what 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 do you what do you find with these people? Uh, maybe you could give an example. Um, um, what you really discover, all these diamonds that you uh, identify. I'm not sure I'm, I'm getting, I'm trying to, to answer. If not, please let me know. Um, in fact, for us, it's like recognizing that, uh, that the organizations we work with know their own territory and we are not the ones that pose the subject they want to work. Uh, for example, we work with an organization that is focused on gender. And what they decided to do, because it's like the, the issue in which they are much more committed, is about thinking territory as body. And they decided to make this, for example, this map in which they worked with women, with women around the, the place the territory they work with, they are located in a territory that is in the border, Mexican border to Guatemala. As you know, Mexico is a transit for migrants from the south to go to the United States of America. So somehow they work in an area that this migration is an issue very, very deep. In fact, they are near a river and, and all these migrants have to cross around the river but their organization is called Women, Organization, and Territories. So their focus on their mapping was around also gender, environment, gender, migration, what is meant to be outside of, of the area of the territory you belong to, being in transit, what does it mean a river for each of the migrants that are crossing there. So they decided to think of the body, of the body, of the women body, on territory and they focus their own their own conversation their own collective mapping processes all around these issues that were co meaningful to them so somehow answering your question is not that we discover anything is much more that we bring the tools in this case collective mapping that can be used for it by the perspective in respect of this each organization, how this tool that we are bringing, that we are sharing, may be meaningful for them. And this example is for, us, is for me maybe making much more clear what I'm trying to share on the processes we do even with neighbors or with organizations that we are working in in other territories. We are not the ones that are deciding what, is, what it is going to be about. We are sharing tools and building alongside neighbors, collaborators, or organizations, how these tools that we know and that we can share, how we together can build something meaningful for the territories. And as we are located and anchored to Santa Maria La Rivera, instead of coming 
to Tabasco and imagining what can we do, we get in touch with an agent, in this case, this organization, MOOTS, Mujeres Organizaciones y Territorios, Women Organization and Territories, and how they, that know their context, that know the communities they work with, that know their territory, can appropriate of the tool. And that's what for us is meaningful. They did this kind of, of maps, but they also did in the process that we, that I was sharing with you with the iconoclasistas, in the process, we designed this map. That as you can see, is using the icons of the first book I showed you. I don't know if you remember, but it's appropriated to their own territory. And they are pointing out what it's meaningful for them. The icons are very open in a way that, for example, here you have an animal, a cow, but it can be uh, thinking about ganado, about producing meat in the, in the area, but also they can give it another meaning. So that's why the collective mapping is very meaningful and very um, a strategic way on thinking a territory. This, this map wasn't made by one person in a desk, neither that one. It's a collective process in which all the knowledge of people that inhabit the territory is bringing on this. So what you were asking is what we somehow discover is much more how these organizations that we work with make their own the tool and they decided which story, which narrative they wanted to talk about their territory. In this case, this organization, we are working now on a publication that is going to gather all these experiences, not talking about the manual that was the first tool we made. It was a manual to use this, this tool. And now we're gathering the experiences that these organizations made their own this tool. And each of them decided what they wanted to talk about. These ladies decided to talk about the relationship between body and territory. Other organization that is located in the peninsula of Yucatan in Yucatan, in the south of Mexico, decided to talk about the different kind of corn that is uh, produced there, that in Mexico, as you know, we are the center of origin of corn. For Mesoamerica, for all the area of Mexico, corn is really important because it's the way we feed, but it has been threatened because it has been recently opened to the NGOs and to Monsanto and to all those kind of things. So what they decided to do is to gather all the information of peasants that are still producing local corn and they are doing a map with all the diversity that peasants have uh, take care all around history of the corn that is produced there. Another uh, organization decided to talk about how the promoters of their own organization have been doing a process on growing. So as you can see, instead of no, we posing the subject, we share the tools and each of them decide what they want to talk about. Look, may, may, maybe you could go a little bit deeper into your notion of icons or tools i mean maybe you understood the also vielleicht dieses beispiel wenn sie über über also werkzeuge spricht über die I, icons um, maybe can maybe you can give a, a really specific example because i mean what are these icons yeah, yeah exactly yeah but aber beispiele davon icons is a is, is, is uh, icons uh, um are these drawings that can be used? It's like a language. Yeah, yeah, but what's what's in this shop? What's in? What's, you, you want? Yeah. No. I wanted to understand. It's a question. Ask. The themes I, as I understood, the themes are different. On one side, for the uh, women, it was consciousness. That was a big theme consciousness of themselves and the country. And uh, um, another big theme was uh, the uh, 
um, corn uh, to make bread and all these things. It's corn for bread. Yes, uh, wheat or uh, corn. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, then that is the uh, that's uh, that's the project. Or meat is the project. Uh, it's it depends on what's uh, the need in in the the area. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Ja, ja, das, ja. Sie haben es richtig verstanden. Ja. The need of the area and the, per, and the perspective that the communities that is inhabiting that area are meaningful to them. Genau. Because it's genau. not that it's like relevant for the outsiders, but for the ones that are leaving the territory. Thank you. It's a kind of empowerment. Yeah, yeah, sure. And it's recognizing that the knowledge from there is the one that is relevant, not the academic or not the ones that uh, can be brought from the outside. But knowing that in the inside and in the relationships with their own territory, inhabitants can imagine what is meaningful, what this can build afterwards, because most of the times these maps, of course, are a representation but most of the times are like a space of dialogue, of building other kind of alliances, other kind of organizations. So as we think of the processes in long term, mm -hmm. let's see what happens next. We are now building the maps of each of the organizations and the publication, but we are, uh, post we are proposing to them that it's not just a paper map, but we can put it for example, in the community center of the, of the space. And again, that won't be our decision. We are going to be speaking with the organization and let's see which is the space that, each, that is much more meaningful to them, not for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sehr gute Fragen. Okay. You want to say something? You get one of the mats. Oh, thank you. Oh, should have Thank you. If you buy one of the publications, do you get a copy of the map? That's uh -huh. Well, yeah. that publication is a manual that was used in a collective process yeah. of inhabitants of a specific territories, and this is the result of that process. Ah, okay. Yeah. And this is like much more the methodology to use it. Yes. What we are preparing now is a like a memoir, like a memory of how this tool has been used, yeah. and it's going to be in a publication, and you will have the map of, of the organizations. So if you go to, is that the Galena? foundation or um, the organization, eventually there'll be a, a publication that covers the methodology and the map itself as well. That's forthcoming, is that what you're saying? Awesome. Okay. Is that, when might that arrive? Is that later in the year or? Uh, um, I think at the end of the year we will have it. Great. So um, was the address, I took photos of the main pages in there. I'll be able to find Sorry? that. I can find how to get that. From, ah, from the website. From the website. Uh -huh. okay. In, in, in okay. the website, you can download it. It's something yeah. maybe I didn't say. All of our publications are not for sale. We distribute yeah. it with organizations that we think may use them, and we right. build them processes yeah. that can activate them. Yeah. But all of them are able are available in the website. Casa Galena Ogdo. Fantastic. Awesome. I'm, I hope that pauses. I have one question because I know mapping as a tool like for a, for the publication, as you said, um, and in this case, like all the times people were mapping for some publication but not included in the writing at the end. How, how is the connection with the persons who are like mapping the territory and in the end fulfilling like the whole um, publication? 
is it like you using this like which would be super okay as well but like having this knowledge from the persons about the territory and using it for your work or is it also like something um co like a collective work in the end everything is collective and this is not used for us it's used for them so the publication is is built by them and it's meaningful and it's going to be for them so it's not just the yeah, knowledge, it's recognizing, of course, that this is a collective knowledge that is uh, be, bring, bring brought to the map, but also we are talking and we are speaking among us. It's not that something that is going to be uh, circulating in other spaces. It's, it's like for building again another stage of this dialogue in between, inside the communities. Okay, so I think that's it. Thank you very much.